And, and mm-hmm. some of the extent to which this can happen is truly mind boggling. I saw an exchange <clears throat> between David Unwin, that, you know, kind of, uh, English gentleman um, physician yeah. mm-hmm. that we all know and love. He was one time jokingly bragging about how he had a patient whose triglyceride levels went from something like 800 in the course of just eight or so weeks down to like 60. Um, yeah. and, and just these fantastic reductions all because when insulin, it, but mind you, Dom, this is in the yeah. midst of the person possibly eating more fat than they've ever been eating. Yeah. You know, it, it's just because it's not, um, triglycerides in the body are not a, f- a reflection of of what fat is being consumed, but rather what fat is being produced. It's what's mm-hmm. coming from the liver, and insulin will push mm-hmm. that. Insulin will dictate that. I have mm-hmm. not been able to find a single instance of a cell that does not have an insulin receptor. In other words, everything I've seen shows that literally every cell of the body – including red blood cells who, you know, don't even have a mitochondria. They don't have GLUT4 of the glucose transporters, but even still they have, of course, GLUT4 expression doesn't have anything Mm -hmm. to do with it, but they all have insulin receptors. So a lot of the, uh, these individuals who study longevity and generally promote a a low protein diet, they, they do so if I may put words in their mouth and, and I don't, that might not be fair. I believe they do so because it's their view that dietary protein will um, stimulate mTOR in the body, in, in cells. And if mTOR is activated, that will inhibit autophagy. And then now you're promoting cellular aging. That is certainly the justification for the use of rapamycin, which is a very strong mTOR inhibitor. So that's the idea that it, it sort of centralizes on that um, enzyme, the protein in the body, in, in the cell, the, that protein mTOR. That if they can if they can turn down mTOR, now they yeah. disinhibit autophagy and then longevity would be promoted. That, that mm-hmm. is, of course, all based in in animal studies. There's no um, even they even these individuals would admit there's no conclusive human evidence. If the primary goal is to inhibit mTOR or keep it turned down more often than it's turned on, all the more reason to scrutinize the hormone insulin rather than amino acids. A study done in human in, in muscle cells found that leucine, you know, the most anabolic mTOR stimulating of all That's the amino true. acids, mm-hmm. it yes, it did activate mTOR, but it did not activate it as much as insulin did. Insulin mm-hmm. stimulated mTOR much more dramatically than leucine did. And I think that to me, neither of those is inherently bad. But if lowering mTOR is the primary outcome, all the more reason to focus on insulin because Dom, we both know it's the average individual who is living every waking moment in a state of elevated insulin, not constantly yeah. elevated, you know, leucine or amino acid. Um, and that's because we wake up in the morning, insulin has come down throughout night, the night. We spike it with a starchy, sugary breakfast. We do it again with a mid-morning snack, again at lunch, again in the afternoon, again at evening, etc. Every waking mm-hmm. moment is spent in a state of elevated insulin. That is the problem. If, if, if the worry is that mTOR is too constantly activated, it's not because of dietary protein, because most people don't eat a lot of protein. 